I call bribery, and like any good upstanding citizen in a seat of power, I take it. What if Naruto was from every clan? Or what if Naruto had the Senrigan? Do I really have to choose? Senrigan comes from the Otsutsuki, and they're a clan, right? So technically, I could add this to the story and just tell both what ifs simultaneously. So yes, yes, I do think I will do that. <laughs> Welcome to the Amagi. Before we begin, only 25% of our viewers are subscribed, so if you're a fan of the video, please like and double check if you are subscribed. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. He was sleeping, in warm darkness, a dreamless sleep. No images were playing in his head. Why should they? Even if they did, there would not be anything for him to detect. He had no concept of sensory perception. Nothing but this nice feeling he felt that was warm and calm, like he was swaddled in love. How long had he been in this semi-lucid state? This point where every so often he heard a muffled voice. He wasn't sure. Slowly, the two lids that covered a pair of crystal blue eyes opened. Hello, life. It's a pleasure to meet you. Er, well, that's what Naruto would have said if he had any concept of communication. He was floating in a green liquid. No air entered his lungs. Only water poured through the maskless mouth into his chest. All that being said, Naruto was not panicking. He was not drowning, so he was okay. The oxygen and nutrients that had kept him alive for this long were being fed to him through a single tube running down from the top of the tank. A single cord attached to his midsection. Suddenly, his eyes adjusted to the strange lighting and the darkness beyond the tank. He saw small blue squares in the distance, and in what little light came from them, there were two shadows. One taller than the other. The taller one handed off a clipboard to the other as both figures glanced in Naruto's direction. The taller of the two stepped to the tank, his pale face illuminated by the light. He offered a gentle smile. Naruto floated closer to the edge, pressing his hand against the tank, his hand being met with the image of this pale man's hand over it. Naruto's curiosity was stoked as he saw this. He then looked at the man eye to eye through the glass and smiled the cutest, most innocent smile. It was enough to cause even Orochimaru to smile back. How wholesome. It was a shame that this one did not truly understand what world he'd just been born into. The child was already in its pre-adolescent stage of life, being the equivalent of a nine-year-old. Of course, he had not been sitting in that tank for nine years. Heavens forbid. That would have taken way too long. Particular growth hormones and other various chemicals had been fed into the child to cause it to see its body and mind expand. It had been expected that the child's growth would reach this point within two and a half years before slowing back down to the natural aging cycle. But it had taken a little over three years for this child to reach this point. During most of this time, the child was kept sedated and unconscious, so this was truly its first experience with life. And already, Orochimaru felt the child probing his mind for information. Such a ravenous learner. Your need to learn is fitting for the one who gave birth to you. He knew that the child was listening into his mind. The child sat there for a second as his attention turned away from Orochimaru for a second. He suddenly began cycling through various dojutsu. Sharingan, Byakugan, Katsuryugan, and various other dojutsu that Orochimaru had never actually seen before, such as a yellow one that possessed what appeared to be spokes like a wheel in them, as well as one that seemed to be blue with a black moon circling the lens, the sclera having turned a strange color that almost made it resemble a window holding behind it all of space and time. The child was seemingly trying out different combinations, as well as even a ringed dojutsu that Orochimaru assumed was the Rinnegan of old. He smiled. He had done well when he came into contact with someone within another organization. Through favors and shared technology and discoveries, he was able to procure a sample of DNA from something not entirely human, a celestial being. The vial itself said only Subject Shibai. That, mixed with some of the DNA of all the other clans accessible to him in Konoha, had been concocted together. Originally, Orochimaru was unable to mix all of this DNA together due to how vastly different they were. All of the traits would not fit into a single genome without horrible repercussions that had seen many a disfigured creature expiring three minutes out of the tank. The addition of Otsotsuki DNA, however, had been able to properly store these traits and utilize them without corrupting the entire DNA strand. That being said, the child was further given the genetic base of the strongest shinobi ever, Minato Namakaze. This was visible in the boy's blonde hair. It was as if Orochimaru were looking into the eyes of Jiraiya's pupil once again. Orochimaru picked up the clipboard. Project Deus Ex Machina, the paper said. Honestly, this was the truth. Orochimaru had been attempting to create the most powerful body ever. He was literally attempting to create a god. A god from the machine. And this boy's awakening had proven that he'd succeeded. He sat the clipboard down and turned to Kabuto. Prepare to drain the tank. I'll fetch a towel. The boy floated there. He came to the tank to curiously watch Kabuto. 
Kabuto looked up to see the boy smiling brightly at him. Kabuto attempted to ignore him. That was until the boy began pushing his face into the glass and making the most hilarious expressions that even a seasoned shinobi like Kabuto couldn't keep from smiling at. You certainly are a happy one, he said, not entirely expecting the boy to even understand what he had said. Slowly, the tank began to drain of the fluid. The child, not yet sure how to walk, would just sit there on its knees face no longer jovial, having experienced its second limitation beyond the glass. Gravity. Turns out it was pretty rough existing under your own weight. Orochimaru returned with the blanket. Kabuto would raise the glass and proceed to cut the boy free from the cord that had kept him alive. Now it's official. Happy birthday, he said. Orochimaru handed the towel to Kabuto and he would wrap it up around him. He would attempt to help the boy stand. Orochimaru stepped back to watch, hoping to see how fast Naruto would adapt to the new requirement of proper motor functions. Naruto managed to stand on his feet with Kabuto's help. Kabuto was doing most of the work to keep him standing. Naruto was looking down the whole time, his gaze darting between his own and Kabuto's feet. He watched Kabuto's movements and attempted to emulate them himself. He was learning to walk already. Orochimaru smiled. That adaptive nature surely had been the result of adding in his own genes. Kabuto sat him down in a chair. Hello, Orochimaru said. Hello, the boy parroted. Not that Naruto had yet grasped the meaning of the word, he was simply saying it too, unaware that this ironically was the proper response to a greeting. Kabuto seemed uncomfortable, and why shouldn't he be? Naruto was currently probing both Kabuto and Orochimaru's mind for relevant data. Orochimaru opened his mind wide for Naruto, as it seemed Kabuto was closing his off. It's not as if Naruto were going to find anything that Orochimaru needed to hide. Naruto wasn't even properly protecting his mind. Orochimaru was capable of tracing back the boy's mental tether, and was able to gaze inside via a mental feedback loop. Naruto was currently focusing on communication data, particularly grammar, structure, and vocabulary. Even if if he did see the more secret parts of his mind, he wouldn't understand it. The boy opened his mouth and cooed, as if testing his voice in preparation for his first words. And what were those words? N new, new. Come on, you can do it, Orochimaru coached him. Naruto smiled. Noodle. Kabuto sat there. Noodle. Naruto looked at Kabuto and nodded. Noodle. Uh, hungry. Orochimaru laughed. You heard him, Kabuto. Go make some ramen for him. Kabuto sighed and rolled his eyes. He would leave to go do this. Orochimaru, on the other hand, would continue attempting to communicate with him. So, everyone needs a name. I don't think subject N4R4T0 will work for much longer. So why not call you Naruto? Naruto. Naruto would smile. My name. Not too long into this conversation, Kabuto did return with the noodles. He assumed it was too early to try chopsticks, so he brought a fork. Orochimaru, on the other hand, insisted that he use chopsticks instead. He wanted to see if he could adapt to a more complex motor skill. This didn't go anywhere. And by the first 15 minutes of trying, the ramen was starting to grow cold, so Orochimaru surrendered and let Naruto use the fork. Naruto's face twisted when he tasted it. Cold, he said. Kabuto, go warm it up, Orochimaru commanded. Kabuto would do as bidden. He would eventually return with the ramen, having warmed it up. Naruto took a bite from it and dropped his fork into the juice as he began to whine. Forgot to tell you to blow on it, Kabuto said with a sly smile. Orochimaru looked at him from the corner of his eye. Orochimaru nodded to Naruto. Try again, but this time blow on it. Naruto would do as asked, only for the noodles to go everywhere. This is pathetic, Kabuto said. Orochimaru shook his head. No, this is progress. Within a half hour, Hour, he's already started walking, talking, and eating solid foods on his own. We'll give him more time to adapt. And so they did. They presented Naruto with something more fitting than a towel to wear and had him walking about on his own. He started slow, but in the span of a few hours, he was already running an obstacle course. We're going to need a more efficient way to teach these things, Orochimaru said. We'll brainstorm a curriculum that should at least get those who use it up to speed quicker. Naruto would then be brought to his room where he'd be given a bed, blankets, and various pillows. He would crawl into them like a feral animal. Animal, but he seemed to get comfortable and proceeded to sleep. In the weeks to come, he'd begin his studies and training to get his body strong, and Naruto's ability to adapt was working out well for him, helping him to begin to understand jutsu and the like. Once he had the basics down, he really took off in his studies, conglomerating more and more knowledge unto himself. This caused him to venture off many times to explore. As he explored, though, he would reach a certain barred room, a room with a heavy metal door in front of it and a keypad. Naruto was intrigued by this. He wanted to know what was beyond it, but Orochimaru would find him as he was trying to enter. No, you're not to go in there. 
Why? Naruto would ask. Orochimaru would kneel down to his level. Because that's where daddy keeps his most dangerous experiments. Now go on to the training room. I want you to train with Kimimaro for a time. Naruto would run off to the training room where he'd begin training with Kimimaro. Kimimaro was one of Orochimaru's greatest warriors. But as Kimimaro was practicing his moves, he would notice that he'd form a bone in his body and would pull it out of his skin and begin swinging it around as a sword. Naruto watched as he began to wonder how he did it. He would ask Kimimaro flatly. Kimimaro would tell him that it was the same as commanding any bone to do anything, to sense it and will it. Suddenly, Naruto attempted this and would create a bone blade just as Kimimaro had. Kimimaro would almost freak out before remembering what Naruto was. Oh yeah, you're that guy. Your abilities are hardly worth anything. They, like you, are just a copy of something real. I'm not a copy, Naruto would say. Kimimaro would scoff. You don't know anything about yourself, do you? Kimimaro turned around to face Naruto. If you're so special to the master, then you must be strong. If you're strong, then you can beat me. If not though, you will just die, and it will prove to Lord Orochimaru that I am, and always have been, his most promising vessel. Kimimaro would launch toward Naruto. Naruto would raise his bone blade to catch Kimimaro's. Stop! We don't have to kill each other! Father said we should just train! Kimimaro scoffs. He wants you to train because he wants a weapon. He feels that you can and will be stronger than me, which is why he cast me aside. I'm going to show him the error in his calculations. I'm going to destroy you and every single one of your Kekai Genkai with my own singular one. He continued striking at Naruto, and as he did, Naruto's bone blade began to show signs of cracking. Your blade is as weak as you are. It's a false bone. You're a false person. An imitation. Nothing. Cell cultures grown in a lab. He swung his blade again, creating another large crack. Grown in a petri dish, the blade kept falling upon Naruto's, and he thinks you're going to replace me. He swung his bone blade back and then smashed into Naruto's, shattering the blade and sending Naruto flying back. Your father grew you in a vat, and no doubt he has others set to replace you. I guess I'll just have to kill you all. Kimimaro comes running at Naruto, but suddenly he freezes when he sees Naruto look up at him. Naruto is sitting on his knees and only now is making eye contact. His eyes were glowing red. Whether it was the Sharingan or the Katsuryugan, Kimimaro did not know, but he saw red all the same. Suddenly, Naruto's shadow around him began to move, thickening like a void as tendrils began twirling in all directions. The shadows reached out and gripped Kimimaro, holding him still. From all directions, wood spikes would appear and fire at him. Kimimaro was reduced to a glorified pincushion. He didn't even have time to cry out in pain. Even if he was still alive for a time after this traumatic event, he was unable to speak. He perished there. Naruto would slowly regain control of himself. He saw what he had done and panicked. He rushed over to check on him, but realized that he was dead. He turned around and ran to the door. It was then that Orochimaru stopped him. He looked inside and saw Kimimaro and then looked down at Naruto, who had a look of terror upon his face. I swear I didn't mean to do it. He wanted to kill me. He said I was grown in a petri dish and that I wasn't a real person. He wanted to kill me because he said that you should focus on him. I swear I didn't mean to do it. Orochimaru put his hand on Naruto's shoulder. You should just go to your room for a while. I'm going to have to rethink your training. And so Naruto went to his room. There he crawled under the covers and just sort of hid. He cried a little and did a lot of thinking. He cycled through the stages of grief over and over again before he fell asleep. And as he slept, he remembered waking up in a tank. Naruto didn't remember anything before the tank. Was it possible that he was born in it? No, Orochimaru was his father. That was the truth. But then, who was his mother? Naruto awakened in a cold sweat. The clock said 3 a.m. He crawled out of bed and began making his way to the bathroom to relieve himself before returning. As he walked back to his room, he would pass by the training area where he killed Kimimaro. He looked in and saw only bloodstains from where Kimimaro's body had once been. As he remembered what he'd done, Kimimaro's words echoed out in his head. You're a false person, an imitation, nothing. Cell cultures grown in a lab. Naruto kept walking around the base. The floor was cold, and the only sound to be heard was the mechanical droning of various systems that kept the underground facility warm or cool, depending on the time of year. The sounds of refrigerators and other machines that couldn't be turned off for the night due to their purpose continued to hum. While he didn't often pay these machines much mind, at night their quiet natures seemed like a deafening thunder. These halls had always been freaky to him, long and numerous, yet so few to walk them. A liminal space that subverted expectations for a base designed to have so few people in it at any one time. Naruto would stop, finding him outside of the door that Orochimaru had told him to avoid. He needed to know what was back there. He couldn't explain why, he just felt like he did though another piece of him felt as if he had already been there once, but he couldn't remember. He looked at the door and tried to open it, but it was locked. It wouldn't budge without the correct number pattern. As Naruto looked at the control panel, he lamented that he didn't know the code, but he knew who did, Orochimaru. 
Orochimaru would never tell him the code, but maybe he didn't have to. Naruto would close his eyes and concentrate. Opening his eyes, they would show the pattern of the Senrigan. Naruto began to peer back in time, quickly searching for any point in time where Orochimaru would have keyed in the number. He would find one such occasion. 2684. Naruto repeated the numbers over and over again as he began to type them into the computer. There was a green light and a thud signaling that the door was no longer locked. Naruto would put his hand on the cold handle, and where he had previously had immovable resistance, there was now give. He would twist the handle and open the door. He'd step in. There was nothing but a grate leading the way before him, a dim green light within. At the end of that light, he found a tank, the same thing he recalled being in. Coming to that tank, he looked at it with fear. He found a computer on a table next to it. On there, he found a file, and he opened it up. Subject N4RT0, nicknamed Naruto, has begun showing signs of incredible adaptation. His ability to learn to speak, as well as his ability to grasp simple jutsu, is beyond remarkable. Further tests are required. There seem to be log entries for every day since his awakening, including today. Naruto opened that one up. Subject has displayed aggressive behavior. After being pushed into a corner, the subject lashed out in an aggressive and feral way, resulting in the death of Kimimaro Kaguya. Possible signs of mental instability and possible signs of mental collapse resulting from the creation process. Perhaps version 0.2 will have differing results. Suddenly, as Naruto clicked off the file, the room lit up as if autonomy had been granted to it. Naruto turned around and looked back down the corridor, only to find at least two dozen more pods, each one with an identical being to Naruto in different developmental stages. As the lights activated, each of the beings opened their eyes and looked at him. Naruto panicked and let out a scream. It wasn't much longer thereafter that Orochimaru himself appeared. He looked around the room and then to Naruto, who was so startled by this that tears were actually running down his face. Father! What is this? Each clone turned to Orochimaru and looked at him. Orochimaru sighed. Why did you have to disobey me, Naruto? I thought you might be the one. The one for what? Naruto asked. The one that I would become. Orochimaru touched a button on the wall and turned the lights out again and then closed the door behind him. He produced a kunai as he walked closer. But after this, I don't think I could keep you under control. He began to approach Naruto. Naruto, in a panic, would grip the clone with shadow paralysis jutsu before using ice style to form a spike to throw at Orochimaru. The spike hit Orochimaru, but he would disappear in smoke. Suddenly, a hand hand wrapped around Naruto's mouth as a sharp pain dug into his side. He stood there, shocked for a moment. He looked back at Orochimaru. Orochimaru's tongue extended out like the snake he was. You thought I was foolish enough just to approach you after what you did today. I'm not that stupid, but it seems you are. Naruto activates his Ketsuryugan, and immediately Orochimaru lets go of him. Naruto stumbles forward and falls down to the ground as spurts of blood drip down from just below his ribs. In that moment, all Naruto could think of doing was getting out. One of his eyes switched to a Rinnegan as a Yomotsu Hirasaka portal opened right in front of him. He began crawling toward it. Orochimaru drew closer. Naruto would use the Diva Path to push Orochimaru back into the empty tank, causing its contents to spill. Naruto crawled through the portal and landed in a forest. As he used the Ketsuryugan to try and slow the bleeding, he got up and began walking, covering his side with his hands. His white pajama shirt was now crimson in color, the red circle growing at an alarming rate. He stumbled further until he hit his knees. Looking up, he saw a set of gates with the Kana for Hermit on the front. He managed to get to his feet. He knew that people lived here, and maybe one of them could save him. During this time of the night, the watch was being kept by many a faithful shinobi of Konoha. They were here to protect the village and guard it overnight. They saw the boy stumbling in. They think that something weird is up, but suddenly he collapses in the middle of the road. The ninja known as Iruka rushes out to check on him first. He lands beside him and sees his side. He looks back and calls up to the others. Hurry, get a doctor! This boy's bleeding! Iruka began first aid. He takes clean cloth and mashes it into the wound. Naruto cries out and jolts at the sudden pain of a strange cloth being stuffed into the open wound. Iruka would then use his other hand to hold Naruto still. Hold still, you're gonna be okay. Naruto's vision begins to blur as his lids grow heavier. He sees the shinobi only for a split second before it grows dark. He hears Iruka call out to him. Whoa, no, don't go to sleep. Keep your eyes open. Despite Naruto's desire to do as he asked, and despite his will to survive, he can't hold it any longer. He passes out. When he next awakens, he does so in a hospital bed. As his eyes open, sun is shining in from the windows. From here, he has a perfect view of the village and the Hokage Rock, which bore four faces. Despite having slept for many hours, he didn't feel at all rested. If anything, he feels weaker now than he had before. He looks up and finds that he's attached to an IV drip, which held a bag full of O-positive blood. He felt that his side 
died where he'd been stabbed and felt bandages. It seemed that they had managed to stop the bleeding and were currently attempting to replace what he had lost. Naruto blinked a few more times to drive the fog away. A guard that he hadn't noticed before that was stationed at the side of the room looked at him and stood up before moving to the door to speak with a nurse. Not long after, a doctor entered the room and walked over to Naruto and began to check him out to make sure he was doing well. Naruto was silent for a moment. The doctor spoke. Can you tell me what happened? Naruto opened his mouth to speak, but only a weak whisper came out. I was stabbed by my father. The doctor stopped for a moment to look into Naruto's eyes. He then continued, Your father stabbed you, and can you tell me who you are and who your father is? Naruto nodded. I'm Naruto, and my father's name is Orochimaru. The doctor stopped again and looked at Naruto's eyes. Orochimaru? Naruto nodded. The doctor would then leave the room and the guard would return. Naruto would be left there to rest for another half hour before a new shinobi walked in. This man wore a headband with a leaf pattern emblazoned upon it. The man stood by Naruto's bedside. Hello, Naruto. My name is Inoichi Yamanaka. I would like to speak to you about what you said earlier, about your father, Orochimaru. How much are you aware of in regards to your father? Naruto shrugged, just that he likes to experiment and do science -y stuff. Inoichi nodded. Well, your father, Orochimaru, has been a wanted criminal for quite a few years now. He's been accused of human experimentation. Naruto's face grew more dire. If you know where he is, it would greatly help us to bring him to justice. Naruto shook his head. I don't remember. Inoichi sat there for a moment. You don't remember or you don't want to remember. Naruto sat there for a moment. Inoichi was silent as well. I think the only option left here is for me to dive into your mind. Then maybe I can help you remember. Inoichi put his hand on Naruto's head, but instead of Naruto passing out, he remained conscious. In fact, he began probing around inside of Inoichi's head, which caused him to recoil with the hiss. The other shinobi that had been guarding Naruto the whole time sat forward, ready to do anything if Inoichi had been attacked. But Inoichi didn't call for him. He instead simply gazed into Naruto's eyes with curiosity. That was... That was telepathy. But more than that, you not only resisted my techniques, but you dove into my mind. Inoichi Yamanaka, 35 years old, owner of a flower shop, husband to a woman, father to a daughter. The daughter's named Ino, after you. That's sweet. Inoichi seemed like he might lose his cool, but he calmed himself down. Very impressive. Where did you learn such a technique? Naruto shrugged. I've always been able to do it, I think. Inoichi shook his head. If you don't tell us where Orochimaru is, we'll have to use advanced interrogation techniques, and I really don't want to use those, especially on a child no older than my own daughter. Naruto cocked his head. I don't know where he is. This is the first time I've been out this far. Then how did you get here, Inoichi asked. Naruto shrugged. Through a portal, I guess. A portal. Naruto activated his Rinnegan. Yeah, a portal, like this. He would suddenly open a portal. Inoichi was shocked. He wasn't super well versed in ancient legend, but from his experience, he was pretty sure that this was the mythical Rinnegan. According to Jiraiya, this is exactly what it looked like. So how did this kid come into having these? Was it possible that this kid's eyes once belonged to Nagato when they were pilfered by Orochimaru? Inoichi wasn't so sure about this, so he decided to let it rest for a moment and go to inform the Hokage. He stood up from his seat. Well, that was informative. I think I'll be off now. I need to talk to a friend. Is it okay if I bring the friend here to meet you later? Naruto nodded. Sure. Inoichi smiled. If you're good, I'll bring you a sucker or something. What's a sucker? Inoichi was surprised. It's candy. Have you never had one? Naruto shook his head. What's candy? Inoichi seemed surprised by this, but he quickly gained his composure. It's something you're going to love. Trust me. I'll see you soon, okay? Inoichi would then proceed to leave. He would head to the Hokage's office where he would find Hirazin. Hirazin was busy as always, putting away some paperwork. To Hirazin, any business that Inoichi could bring would be a relief. He looked up from his desk. What can I do for you, Inoichi? Inoichi then spoke. Late last night, a wounded boy stumbled into Konoha. Hirazin nodded. I actually just read over your report. I certainly hope he's okay. Inoichi offered a slight smile. You'll be relieved to hear that he's on the mend and has planned to make a full recovery. Hirazin clapped once with a smile as he leaned back into his chair. Wonderful. He turned to look at the intel agent again. But why are you bringing him up then? Inoichi then began his report. When he awakened, he began to say some strange things. So I was called in to investigate, and my findings were, well... Strange. How so? Hirazen asked. Well, first of all, he claimed to be the son of Orochimaru, and when I asked where Orochimaru was, he said he didn't know. I attempted to dive into his mind, but he possesses the innate ability to resist and even turn this ability back on the caster. When pressed about how he got to the village, he said it was through a portal, and then he activated the Rinnegan and opened a portal right there in front of me. Hirazen was almost out of his chair. Did you say a Rinnegan? Inoichi nodded. Hirazen stood and began to make his way out the door. Together, Hirazen and Inoichi made their way to the hospital where Naruto was. As soon as the door opened, Hirazen stepped in and walked to the bed. 
He saw Naruto, who would then turn to face him. As soon as he did, Hiruzen's heart nearly stopped. Minato? No, I'm Naruto, the boy said. Inuichi stopped for a moment. He hadn't realized how much this boy favored Minato. Hiruzen walked over and sat down, his mind afire with all the possibilities. Was it possible that this kid was related to Minato? Naruto would sit there silently, watching Hiruzen. Hiruzen shook his head to break himself out of it. Hello, Naruto. It's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Hiruzen. I just wanted to ask you some questions. Is that okay? Naruto looked to Hiruzen, then to Inuichi, then to the guard who couldn't stop watching him like a hawk, before finally returning his gaze to Hiruzen. A lot of people have been asking me a lot of questions today. Hiruzen let off a grandfatherly smile. I'm sure they have. It's probably seeming pretty hectic for you right now, huh? Naruto nodded his head slowly. Hiruzen then spoke. Well, I would like to ask a few questions of my own. Then we won't ask you any more questions for the day. How does that sound? Naruto smiled. Okay. Hiruzen then started. I know you said you don't know how you got here from there, but it would be appreciated if you could tell me a few details about the place. Naruto thought about it. Well, it had lots of hallways that were mostly empty. There were rooms for eating, sleeping, and other stuff. Then there was your sciency rooms. I was born in one of those. Then I found a locked door and I went in and I found more pods like the one I'd been floating in. And each one had another version of me inside of it. Hiruzen and Inoichi looked at each other with surprise. Cloning, Hiruzen asked. Inoichi agreed with this. Probably so, sir. Hiruzen then returned to face Naruto. Mr. Yamanaka here has told me that you've been able to utilize the Rinnegan. Is that true? Naruto activated them. How did you get these? Hiruzen asked. Naruto shrugged. I was born with these, too. Naruto began to cycle through all the dojutsu he had access to. He then cycled back to Rinnegan. Inoichi and Hiruzen were floored. There was no telling how many Kekai Genkai this boy had. And you can't get back to where Orochimaru lives. Naruto objected. Actually, I can. All I would need to do is teleport back. Hiruzen was shocked. If we asked you to, would you be able to open a portal straight to Orochimaru's lair? Naruto nodded. Hiruzen would then smile. This boy is going to be very helpful to us. And that's where I plan to stop it for now. What do you think, got the hoods? Was this everything you wanted? I certainly hope so, because we do not do refunds. Ha <laughs> ha. It truly is an interesting story to have Naruto be from every clan. To be frank, I wasn't quite sure how to do it with each clan's blood becoming too diluted to even give him a Kekai Genkai, which is why I chose the science experiment part of the story. I hope it was everything you hoped it would be. And yes, there is more coming. There will be another part to this story, so keep your eyes peeled. Anyway, if you liked it, tell us in the comments below and click that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos as they drop, and while you wait for them, try out one of these what-ifs. Until next time, peace out.